Welcome to Ground Control. I have an item for review and this is the MG216. Let me get my Papal glasses on. MG216 from WFly. It's their third generation RF protocol module and they paired it up. This comes with it. The RG202 says a mini receiver but that I would call that a nano, a nano receiver. That, that is absolutely tiny. Now, let me give you an example. I have a US quarter here. So let me hold this up and take a look at the size of the quarter and the size of that board. It has several pads on it. It comes naked. There's there's no wires or, or cables or pigtails or anything that comes with it. it comes with a um, clear heat shrink. So I think this was really designed for quadcopters for FPV. Um, this new protocol is kind of like uh, Crossfire. It it's designed for uh, long distance, long range um, object penetration, like trees and and walls and things of that nature for flying FPV and it has a low latency high refresh rate uh, two-way communication so um, interesting interesting little deal now I'm going to be putting this not in a quadcopter because why should quadcopter pilots get all the latest technology why don't we get that as well we RC fixed wing pilots I think we deserve it now you so I'm going to be putting this in a plane. I haven't decided which yet. I'm kind of leaning toward the Ishin Micro Sky Hunter because it's a, it's a fairly small plane. And I'm going to be pairing this up with a flight controller slash gyro um, that I just received because I really, I really didn't have anything uh, that I could use with SBUS PPM receiver. So this, this supports SBUS PPM and Crossfire. Um, so the, the unit that I'm going to be connecting it to takes a standard servo connector. So I am going to be soldering a servo connector pigtail to this and I'm going to be soldering the signal wire onto the SBUS pad. So I'll go ahead and throw a picture up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. These, this board is so tiny I can't show you the the pads on camera so I wanted to put a, put a picture up and you can see that it has five pads, it has a ground, it has a five volt uh, a five volt pad, that's what it's compatible with is five volts, it has a crossfire pad, it has an S bus pad, and I think that's also compatible with PPM and then it has a voltage telemetry pad and then if you look at the front of the module You'll see that it has, I think it's a USB Type-C connector at the top for doing uh, updates. It also has an LED status light and then it has a set button. And the receiver also has a set button. And those buttons are for putting the RF module and the receiver into bind mode and also putting the, the, the receiver and the module into update mode. And uh, wireless update is supported on the receiver. Okay, so this module is listed as working with the WFLY ET16 and ET16 transmitter, and I have the WFLY ET16. I could not find information on what the high, lowest level of firmware is required in the transmitter in order to use this RF module, so I checked a couple of days ago and the version of firmware that I had on it I think was 1.1.16 and when I checked for updated firmware they had a version 1.1.18 so I went ahead and downloaded it and flashed that onto the transmitter so the, the transmitter does have the latest firmware on it and uh, you can also set the parameters via OpenTX so this module should work in any multi-protocol OpenTX radio that can use a standard JR module. So I will also be testing this in my Radio Master TX16S. So anyway, let me give you the information on here. I'll give you the summary and the specs. 
on this stuff before we before we move on to getting it set up and bound bound up to it. But it says MT216 module is 2.4 gigahertz, 200 megahertz high refresh rate, low latency, up to 10 milliwatt RF power, the long range uh, module with the RG202 mini receiver. And it does say it's compatible with the ET16S radio, but it's also compatible with the ET16. Uh, the dimensions on the receiver are 14 by 15 millimeters. I did measure that, and that is right on the money. I didn't measure the thickness of it, but I would say from the top of the UFL connector to the bottom of that chip at the center of the, of the board is probably about 5 millimeters in thickness. It says, let me see, 5 millisecond refresh rate at 200 hertz. Um, adapt it, adapt to multiple application scenarios of FPV drones. I hate the term drones, quadcopters, woods, basement, track, stadium, you know, any, any place you're going to be flying where the signal is going to be reflected off of surfaces, where you might go behind a wall or through trees or something. And so uh, this third generation RF technology is supposed to uh, really help penetrate, you know, like the woods and walls and things of that nature uh, to keep your signal strong. Uh, let me see, it has five different power levels on the RF module, anywhere from 5 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt. So you should be able to use this in whatever part of the world that you live in with whatever restrictions they have on power output. So um, 5 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt and it has five different steps uh, from 5 to 100. Sports over the air wireless upgrade of the, of the receiver. And it supports up to 16 channels and it supports battery, power and receiver voltage telemetry. So, all right, so I weighed the RF module. It weighs 41.4 grams. The receiver weighed, with the antenna, weighed 2.6 grams. The antenna wire measured from the top of the UFL connector to the bottom of the crossbeam here is 100 millimeters. And then I measured the width of the crossbeam because sometimes space is a premium, right? At 52 millimeters. And I think that's it. I think that's all the information. It came in this nice little plastic carrying case. So now that you've seen a picture of it, you see what the pads look like, I'm going to go ahead and solder on my servo connector pigtail to the board, put the heat shrink on it, uh, pull out my flight controller. I'm going to be connecting my signal wire to the S-Bus output because my flight controller slash uh, gyro is compatible with SBUS PPM. It didn't say anything about Crossfire. So I'm going to put the signal wire on the SBUS output of the board and then we'll see if we can bind up to it and connect some receivers up to the flight controller and make sure everything is working okay. So don't go away. I will be back. Okay, I have my test rig set up here. Aileron elevator rudder throttle. Let me go ahead and power this on. And I want to throw up a picture on the screen right now so you can see the completed receiver with the servo pigtail attached to it and the heat shrink. That was pretty easy. I, as I stated, I did attach the um, signal wire to the SBUS PPM port pad on the receiver. Okay, so apparently they, they pre-bind these before they ship them out because I powered on my transmitter after I got it set up for the RF module, you know, I disabled the internal module, enabled the external module, I chose Crossfire, and um, after I got my aircraft set up with, with the, using the RF module, powered on the receiver and immediately bound up. So I did not have to put the RF module or the receiver into bind mode manually. They, they bound up right away. So so let me go ahead and get the battery connected here. And if you saw it, it binds immediately. I mean as soon as it powers up it's bound. So I've got aileron elevator rudder. So if you guys can see the control arms on those. So aileron elevator 
rudder, I have my throttle safety switch engaged, so I should not get anything on throttle, which is good. Enable the throttle switch, and I should have motor. Hit my throttle switch, safety switch, shuts it up. Okay, so everything is working as it should. And you see the green LED on the receiver and the green LED on the back of the RF module. They're solid. I've got a good link. So what I'm going to do um, in the next video is put the, now that I've got everything working, I'm going to put it into uh, my Ishii Micro Sky Hunter. In the next video, we will have to take it out and we'll do the field test of the receiver, uh, the transmitter, and the RF module. I have put links in the show notes to the RF module which comes with this receiver and it that is a pretty good price point on it given the fact that it also comes with the receiver. I got online and I compared the price of this RF module crossfire module with other crossfire modules and and then um, you know it was a little bit less expensive than the other ones and the other ones did not come with the receiver so this one also comes with the receiver so given the fact that you get the RF module plus the receiver check it out I've got links in the show notes to it it's got a pretty darn good price point to it and it will also work in a OpenTX multi-protocol transmitter so the net in the next video we're going to test it out with the WFLY ET16 with this module this receiver in the Ishii Micro Sky Hunter and then the video after that, I'm going to put the RF module in my OpenTX um, Radio Master TX16S transmitter, configure it for this receiver and for the Ishin Micro Sky Hunter, and then we will do a field test of that so that you can see the RF module and the receiver working in the WFLY transmitter as well as an OpenTX multi protocol transmitter. I also have a link in the show notes to the playlist for the ET16 transmitter. When I did the initial review of this transmitter, I went over setting up a wing which uses Elevon mixing. So if you're interested in learning how to do that on this ET16, take a look at the initial review video where, where I showed how to set up Elevon mixing on it. Then I did a review of the ET16 with the jumper uh, 4-in-1 RF module and I set up, went through the setup of a four-channel plane on it using the the four and one RF module, and I think that the plane that I set up was the Volantech Sport Cup 500. I can't swear to it, but I think that is the one that I set up and did the field testing with. So I'm not going to go over setting up a model in this video, but if you if you uh, use the link to the playlist, those videos are in the playlist. Okay, so. In the next video, we'll do the field test flight with the transmitter, RF module, receiver. And then when we come back, I'll go over some specifics that I have set up in the RF module. I have mine set up for 100 milliwatt power. So you may, you may need to change that on yours. So anyway, look for the next video. We'll do the, we'll do the flight testing of it, the field test of it. Make sure everything is working as it should. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.